This happens to be a Panasonic top loader. Anyway, the principle is the same for other washing machines. Now, as you can see what has happened here, if you look at the drum, you can see how much free play the drum has. I mean, if you look at that, look at how much motion it's got. It's got so much motion that this drum has been whacking the sides here and it's actually broken the plastic uh, shell that surrounds this drum. Now, just having a look at that nut there, you can use a flat screwdriver like that and turn it. Um, I've pre-loosened it or you can use a socket. This is an impact wrench and you can unscrew it. Now, you might find that it's very tight. Now, to remove this often is quite difficult because it's been sitting there probably for years and uh, it has actually fastened itself pretty tightly there. So this is how I got mine out. Gripping it, uh, it wouldn't come out. I couldn't grip it. I have some, some nylon rope or washing line, whatever you want to use. And I've just depressed it in there. Now, I tried to do this and pull it out, but uh, this didn't work either. So then I used a chisel. So I took a chisel, and as you can see, it's got a bit of a beveled mouth. And I just inserted it there, and then I took a hammer, and I gently tapped around the opening there. So as you can see, I'm going to tap it. There you can see the cog here. Right, so there you can see, uh, I had to hit it over here. Uh, it did damage the threads just a little bit, not, uh, not a lot. And uh, this can still go back in there. Uh, pretty, it's still pretty tight actually. Um, so just if you do slot that in, know that it's going to be quite a mission to get it out. You would have to hit it from this side and tap it out. And now you can go ahead and move the tub nut. Uh, this is a 38. I recommend you use a impact wrench. So this is the tub nut. Uh, very hard to get this out if you don't use an impact wrench. That sheer pulsating action, that knocking, allows you to get this nut off. Right, there's a little washer here. Got the washer out. To get the drum out, I have to take this cover off. Now every washing machine is different, but basically you're going to be looking for some screws around the side. This will come off and then you can get to the drum. This particular washing machine has some little covers here. See, I just remove the cover and then I just unscrew it. Right, you can see this thing is now loosened. Uh, just obviously this is unplugged, just make sure it's unplugged. Right, before you take this off, it's just a good idea to tie this, um, this glass lid down. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift it a little bit and you can see there with the tape, I'm just taping this lid down. As you can see, if it does open, it won't slam, open, closed, open, closed. Now I'm going to lift up the lid, but keeping in mind there are wires and there might be a pipe or two. So I'm just going to do it gently and uh, don't just go like this. You need to lift it up and you need to make sure that when you lift, you're not going to tear any plastic. So I just lift it a bit and just go gently. Now having a look at the back, you can see there's a wire there and you don't want to tug on that wire too tightly. So you might find there's some cable uh, clamps there, cable ties. So I'm just going to put my hand in there and loosen the cable ties. I just slotted that in an available slot there. If you don't have one there, it's fine. Just find somewhere where you can just hold the lid up. Now, if you have a look in there, you can see there's a cable uh, system, cable management system. I've opened it and there's another one there. I'm just going to open it. That's freed up this wire a little bit. So now I don't need to take the lid completely off. I just need to shift it upwards. Okay, to remove the drum, I just need to remove this plastic cover. There's a couple of screws. Make sure they don't fall inside when you unscrew them. That's one, two.
All right, so in this case, there were eight screws. And I'll just take that cover off. And just having a look at this damage, I mean, look how much this uh, drum had been scratching on this cover. Right, so this drum should come out. You might find there's a washer there. And just pull it straight out. Right, I've taken this out. I've removed this uh, plate that was attached here. Uh, this had quite a few screws. You can uh, unscrew it with a socket or a screwdriver. And this is how it was held together. There's a washer that goes like that. The tub nut was like that. This used to have a lot of free play. And the reason why is as follows. Now there's a washer that sits just like that. That stops the drum from hitting the tub. So what has happened is this over time has worn the spindle and this being aluminium has actually worn this aluminium here and this washer here has also worn down a bit and the spindle here coming through here, the shaft, is actually also worn inside there. So all three are worn and that is, relate, that is what is causing that free play and the drum wobbling and knocking on the outer casing, the plastic casing that holds the water. All right, so now I'm going to uh, fix this, but what you're going to see is a very uncommon way of doing it because I'm going to be doing it without the replacement parts from Panasonic. And the only reason why that has happened is I've been unable to get the parts from Panasonic, uh, not even the diagram. They've promised it to me and they've said their headquarters in Dubai uh, are trying to send it to them and whatever, whatever, whatever. It's five days later, I still haven't got anything from Panasonic. Now, historically, I have been able to get parts for the Panasonic washing machines, but now for some reason, it's, uh, have been unable to. So what you're going to see is an uncommon solution. Obviously, in your country, please use the correct spare parts. But here you're going to see me uh, kind of what we call a boer markup, which means you just make it work. So what I'm going to do is because this is not too low, that's the main problem. The problem is that because the nut that tightens onto this plate um, is tight, but that plate is actually wobbling even though the nut is tight because over here where this washer is it's kind of worn out so i'm going to uh, fashion another washer to kind of lift it up to space it up again so that it is fairly tight uh, when i put the nut back all right so i have some large washers as you can see uh, they're a little bit too narrow so i'm just going to uh, grind them a little bit wider and then these will be wide enough to get on that shop now just clean here um, there is a rubber seal here and there's nothing wrong with this rubber seal and then I'm putting this uh, first washer that I've made as you can see it still can move remember the shaft has been gouged here uh, but nevertheless it will raise the plate and that will solve the problem so this is the original washer which I'm putting back now and then the plate would go this way around Okay, right, so I've made myself another washer. Now, ideally, if you could go and buy one of these, it would be great. So this is, was my original, and I filed, I filed the inside. As you can see, it's bigger, and I also just use an angle grinder to cut the outside. Right, just to give you an idea, this is the washer that sits right towards the bottom. And now you can see the one I've cut there, 33. Now, why that's important is, this is the underside, and as you can see, that's got a slot in there, and then the one that I've made also has to slot in there. That's why this size would not work. Right, so that washer goes there, and then there's this nut here that goes in place like that. Now, what I notice is that this thing still moves, and the reason is, is that inside here, it's quite worn down, and on the spindle, on the shaft coming from the motor inside the tub, is also worn down. Now, because I cannot get the parts from Panasonic, uh, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna put this nut here, and what I notice is that even when you tighten this nut, after a few washes, this starts to get loose again, which means the drum starts to get loose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill some holes around here and just place this uh, rivet to kind of lock it in place. So I'm gonna use this rivet to lock it. I'm gonna go one, two, and maybe uh, elsewhere, and just lock it in place and see if that solves this problem. And now is the, the nut, the big nut. Now I'm going to tighten it. 
and you can see this thing is, is tight. So what I want to do now is I want to kind of lock it in place. Now if you just leave it like this, what happens is after one or two washes, unfortunately this plate actually comes loose, keeping in mind that it holds the drum and the drum weighs at least 50 kilos. Well, if you think about it, it can take about 60 liters and 60 liters is 60 kilograms. This thing starts to turn and then after two, three washes, you're finding that it's already starting to wobble. So I need to lock this plate in place, uh, almost attaching it to this nut. Now I'm sure that's probably what we're was originally here and as I said um, I don't want to spend any more money on this so I'm just going to try and fix it myself and also I cannot get the parts from Panasonic anyway so I'm actually kind of stuck so as you can see I've just drilled a little pilot uh, point there and what I was trying to do is see if I could somehow lock it in place with just a rivet and I can see that um, this is going to work because now when this thing tries to turn uh, it actually gets stuck there on the corner of this nut so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tighten that nut a little bit more and then mark off the drilling spots for my rivets so now something that's important is the amount of washes that you need to put here will be dependent on how badly worn yours is if you put too many washes this nut's going to be too high which means the drum is going to be too high which means it's going to be scratching on the top of the tub so you must make sure that when you do put this nut back on it's kind of at the same height as the threads here right that's pretty tight so this is the central points right so if this nut is here and those are the arrows showing me the middle part and what i want to do is i want to put this rivet here to stop this plate from turning the nut i'm not worried about it turning it's it's very tight so that uh, and also you can put some loctite on there even even make even make it more tight so i want to drill these rivets so that this plate cannot move it's almost getting stuck on the side of this nut so the closest i can get to the nut is at the head of this arrow so I'm going to do a trial run and I'm going to do a first drill and it's going to be here. There we go. Right, so I want the head to stand out a bit. So I'm going to put another hole on the other side there. And as you can see, if I put these rivets with these nuts on, you can see that if the plate tries to turn, uh, it can only move a tiny bit, which is better than uh, the way it was, but now I just want to kind of lock it in place. So I can now put one or two more rivets here and actually rest it on here quite tightly. Like, you'll see once this nut is tight, that once I try and put these rivets here, you'll see that it'll be very tight against the side there. Now, why I'm using rivets is if you have to open this again, you can just drill out the heads of the rivets and then remove the nut if you need to service this uh, part again. Right, to attach the drum to this plate, you'll see there's these uh, raised nipples which need to be placed into the drum. So I'm just going to follow the, uh, the kind of the pin outs. Just check for any debris, uh, you don't want it to block over here, there's a impeller to suck out the water. So all I'm doing is I'm just checking that everything is fine here. Yeah, now it's time to put the drum on. Right, so there's that washer. Now if you wanted to, you could put a drop of Loctite on there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up these rivets with those nuts on.
So that holds it onto this nut and now I can put the pulsator back. Right now there was this uh, little washer there and then this uh, splined piece over here which is where you put your pulsator onto. Right now as I said you could put some thread lock on that uh, nut but in my case I didn't but you can also put a, a drop on these splines and I'll tell you why I have to do that because in my case uh, wonderful uh, machine this is there's the nut that holds the pulsator onto the spline section and as you can see uh, there's half the threads because the other half are in there it actually snapped can't get this part here in uh, in my country so I unfortunately just have to glue it on there I did do it uh, I have done this before on another machine and it lasted it never actually came out I actually had to heat it up to get it out so uh, this does work gluing it is a solution now this spline piece here has to be pushed into the uh, pulsator so and you can just tap it to the hammer and if you're worried about the height of those you don't need to because if you look in here you can see all that space so I had measured that first to see that uh, I could do the solution remember the pulsator sometimes turns independently of the drum so if I have to put the pulsator here you'll see that it can turn independently now I'm not gonna put my glue in yet um, okay as you can see there's the pulsator turning freely of the drum now all you need to do is put that last screw in there but in my case as I said um, the screw is actually uh, broken and I'm just actually going to glue that piece to the spline uh, shaft that comes from the motor section right now I just put this cover on and if you're wondering what this is this is the grating that took place on this uh, top cover because this drum was so loose it was actually uh, wobbling wobbling and it was actually grating now if you're wondering like what about balancing that plate and you know maybe this is balanced considering it goes at like 600 rpm yes that is why I put the uh, rivets opposite each other for balance but if you look at all this grating here I'm sure that that's also made it out of balance as well Right, the measure of the quality of the work is whether this drum will become loose again and will it start wobbling, knocking on the top of this uh, cover here and gouging into the tub. You saw that plastic tub around the drum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a few loads now. Right, so towels are heavy on a machine and I'm going to wash these towels. Right, now you can see that is that is full. I uh, just put the soap. Okay, you can see it's acknowledged it as high or almost full load. And as you can see, there's basically no lateral motion on that drum. And I keep opening the lid. And the reason I do that is it uh, puts the brakes on the drum. And you can see how the drum does not want to continue going. It's uh, staying very tight. So the system that I've developed there is working. Right. 
So as you can see, this is wet. So this is a full load because you can see the clothes are wet and they're close to the full line. Let's check it now. You can see there, um, there's very little free play. You can see there. Uh, still no movement on this drum, lateral movement. Right, so I've opened it up and I've removed the pulsator and I wanted to see if there was any free play and if there was any change in what I've done here. And I've marked off here and there's been no movement whatsoever. And even if I try and move this uh, drum, it shows no movement here. So I can consider this a useful repair. Now what I'm going to do on my side is I am just going to add one more rivet there and there. And remember, the reason why I use the rivets is if you do want to open this up, you just drill the heads off the rivet and then you'll be able to open this nut. So you can still service this at a later stage if you want to. All right, so I have done 15 heavy loads and I will wait before I publish this video. Right, so it's been more than five days. The machine has been used constantly and there's been no movement. I finished mine off by just adding two more stabilizing uh, rivet uh, setups there and the uh, washing machine is working perfectly. I hope this works for you. Thanks for watching. Cheers.